the secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself, and to live in and from that, instead of in that outer circumference of disturbances, the clamors, cravings, and argumentations which make up the animal and intellectual man. These selfish elements constitute the mere husks of life, and must be thrown away by him who would penetrate to the central heart of things, to life itself. Not to know that within you that is changeless and defiant of time and death is not to know anything, but is to play vainly with the unsubstantial reflections in the mirror of time. Not to find within you those passionless principles which are not moved by the strifes and shows and vanities of the world is to find nothing but illusions which vanish as they are grasped. He who resolves that he will not rest satisfied with appearances, shadows, illusions, shall, by the piercing light of that resolve, disperse every fleeting fantasy, and shall enter into the substance and reality of life. He shall learn how to live, and he shall live. He shall be the slave of no passion, the servant of no opinion, the votary of no fond error. Finding the divine center within his own heart, he will be pure and calm and strong and wise, and will ceaselessly radiate the heavenly life in which he lives, which is himself. Having betaken himself to the divine refuge within, and remaining there, a man is free from sin. All his yesterdays are as the tide-washed and untrodden sands. No sin shall rise up against him to torment and accuse him and destroy his sacred peace. The fires of remorse cannot scorch him, nor can the storms of regret devastate his dwelling place. His tomorrows are as seeds which shall germinate, bursting into beauty and potency of life, and no doubt shall shake his trust, no uncertainty rob him of repose. The present is his, only in the immortal present does he live and it is as the eternal vault of blue above which looks down silently and calmly, yet radiant with purity and light upon the upturned and tear-stained faces of the centuries. Men love their desires, for gratification seems sweet to them, but its end is pain and vacuity. They love the argumentations of the intellect, for egotism seems most desirable to them, but the fruits thereof are humiliation and sorrow. When the soul has reached the end of gratification and reaped the bitter fruits of egotism, it is ready to receive the divine wisdom and to enter into the divine life. Only the crucified can be transfigured. Only by the death of self can the Lord of the heart rise again into the immortal life and stand radiant upon the Olivet of wisdom. Do you have trials? Every outward trial is the replica of an inward imperfection. You shall grow wise by knowing this, and shall thereby transmute trial into active joy, finding the kingdom where trial cannot come. When will you learn your lessons, O child of earth? All your sorrows cry out against you. Every pain is your just accuser, and your griefs are but the shadows of your unworthy and perishable self. The kingdom of heaven is yours. How long will you reject it, preferring the lurid atmosphere of hell, the hell of your self-seeking self? There springs the healing streams, quenching all thirst. There bloom the immortal flowers, carpeting all the way with joy. There throng swiftest and sweetest hours. The redeemed sons of God, the glorified in body and spirit, are, quote, bought with a price. And that price is the crucifixion of the personality, the death of self, and having put away that within which is the source of all discord, they have found the universal music, the abiding joy. Life is more than motion, it is music. More than rest, it is peace. More than work, it is duty. More than labor, it is love. More than enjoyment, it is blessedness more than acquiring money and position and reputation. It is knowledge, purpose, 
strong and high resolve. Let the impure turn to purity, and they shall be pure. Let the weak resort to strength, and they shall be strong. Let the ignorant fly to knowledge, and they shall be wise. All things are man's, and he chooses that which he will have. Today he chooses in ignorance, tomorrow he shall choose in wisdom. He shall work out his own salvation, whether he believes it or not, for he cannot escape himself nor transfer to another the eternal responsibility of his own soul. By no theological subterfuge shall he trick the law of his being, which shall shatter all his selfish makeshifts and excuses for right thinking and right doing. Nor shall God do for him that which it is destined his soul shall accomplish for itself. What would you say of a man who, wanting to possess a mansion in which to dwell peacefully, purchased the site and then knelt down and asked God to build the house for him? Would you not say that such a man was foolish? And of another man who, having purchased the land, set the architects and builders and carpenters at work to erect the edifice, would you not say that he was wise? And as it is in the building of a material house, even so it is in the building of a spiritual mansion. Brick by brick, pure thought upon pure thought, good deed upon good deed, must the habitation of a blameless life rise from its sure foundation until at last it stands out in all the majesty of its faultless proportions. Not by caprice nor gift nor favor does a man obtain the spiritual realities, but by diligence, watchfulness, energy, and effort. Strong is the soul and wise and beautiful, the seeds of godlike power are in us still. Gods are we, bards, saints, heroes, if we will. The spiritual heart of a man is the heart of the universe, and finding that heart, man finds the strength to accomplish all things. He finds there also the wisdom to see things as they are. He finds there the peace that is divine. At the center of man's being is the music which orders the stars, the eternal harmony. He who would find blessedness, let him find himself. Let him abandon every discordant desire, every inharmonious thought, every unlovely habit and deed, and he will find that grace and beauty and harmony which form the indestructible essence of his own being. Men fly from creed to creed and find unrest. They travel in many lands and discover disappointment. They build themselves beautiful mansions and plant pleasant gardens and reap weariness, heaviness, and discomfort. Not until a man falls back upon the truth within himself does he find rest and satisfaction. Not until he builds the inward mansion of faultless conduct does he find the endless and incorruptible joy, and having obtained that, he will infuse it into all his outward doings and possessions. If a man would have peace, let him exercise the spirit of peace. If he would find love, let him dwell in the spirit of love. If he would escape suffering, let him cease to inflict it. If he would do noble things for humanity, let him cease to do ignoble things for himself. If he will but quarry the mine of his own soul, he shall find there all the materials for building whatever he will, and he shall find there also the central rock upon which to build in safety. Howsoever a man works to right the world, it will never be righted until he has put himself right. This may be written upon the heart as a mathematical axiom. It is not enough to preach purity. Men must cease from lust. To exhort to love, they must abandon hatred. To extol self-sacrifice, they must yield up self. To adorn with mere words the perfect life, they must be perfect. When a man can no longer carry the weight of his many sins, let him fly to Christ, whose throne is the center of his own heart, and he shall become light-hearted, entering the glad company of the immortals. When he can no longer bear the burden of his accumulated learning, let a man leave his books, his science, his philosophy, and come back to himself, 
and he will find within that which he outwardly sought and found not, his own divinity. He ceases to argue about God, who has found God within. Relying upon that calm strength which is not the strength of self, he lives God, manifesting in his daily life the highest goodness, which is eternal life.